today. We're going to talk about a position if you're a white ball. Really, you're in the middle position. You're stuck on the bottom of side control, and you just can't move it. It's a very, it's not a fun position to be in. So I don't play you. So my partner has side control on me. It's like this, yeah, and it sucks. This is not a good position. But what I am not going to do is I'm not going to. I'm not gonna just keep struggling with him. All he's gonna do from there is just hug me. So if he hugs me, I'm not gonna waste my energy. There has to be an understanding, guys, when you get to side control. When you're on the bottom of side control, you messed up. You're in a bad position. There has to be an understanding that you're kind of on his time. You can't dictate where the fight's gonna go at this point. You're gonna have to kind of move and react accordingly to what he's gonna do. If I just try to explode like crazy, he's just gonna hold me. So just remember, guys, two things. One is, that he cannot hold me and submit me at the same time. So keep that in mind. And he can't, so he can't transition and hold me at the same time. It's gonna be when he's adjusting, that's when I'm gonna try to escape. I can't dictate when the escape comes. I have to be calm and collected and wait. But you need to find a middle ground. You don't wanna do absolutely nothing either. You don't wanna just be dead fish. But you don't wanna go nuts, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one hand to the hip right here. Just like so. And the other hand I'm gonna keep right here. Now a lot of people show this. They like to put their hand right under the neck. Now this can work, but man, if you're against the good guy who knows it, he can wrist slap from here. I used to train with DJ Jackson, and any time you put your hand here, he will wrist slap you. He'll clamp down on it, he'll grab the elbow, I can show you guys that later. But it's a very painful wrist lock. So what I like to do instead is I like to keep my head right along his head, right here, right along the temple. From here I'm safe too from Americanas. He's not gonna Americana me, he's not gonna submit my arm. I'm just right here, just like this. Now it's gonna be in that submission. So let's say he's trying to adjust this arm. He's trying to move it. That's when I can explode. People always see it from here. And it works from here, this is good. But to avoid the wrist lock, I like to come here. And the other thing that's nice about coming here is I'm gonna move his spine out of alignment. Which I'm not gonna be able to do as well from right here. From here, his spine stays in a straight line. But what I'm gonna do, you know, the saying, where the head goes, the body follows, it's gonna apply. I'm gonna just put my arm along his neck and I'm just moving his spine out of alignment. From here, I have the space that I can make a frame. I see a lot of guys that are completely controlled like this. I was just trying to make the frames right here when the guy's hugging me. This isn't gonna help, I don't have any space. I'm going, uh, uh, trying to push from here, it's not gonna do anything. So I gotta wait for that moment. So one hand on the hip, as he starts to adjust, boom, that's when I explode. Look what I do. When I, sh when I bridge into him, I shrimp out and I lock my hand out from here. So now if he tries to come back in, I have a nice spring. Now it doesn't matter how big or strong he is, when I lock my arm safe. Now from here guys, there's a couple different ways I can escape from here. I can make this frame into his neck. I can shoot my shin inside. Boom. And I can come right over the top. Now remember this position, guys, we drill this. This is just the Brazilian legs position that we're working. To fully recover from here, I can shrimp out, foot to the hip, and I'm right here. Back to safety. Now you guys gotta remember, like I said, he can't hold you and submit you at the same time. Just remember that. So when he's just holding me, it's unpleasant, but he's not submitting. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some conventional measures. One, I like to keep my foot up to make sure he doesn't go to mount in the belly. Now I'm just going to have to kind of wait. I put the hand on the hip, and I'm anticipating his motion. Let's say, instead speaking, he's bringing his arm over to come over me. He's got to bring his arm to the other side. As he starts to do that, bring your arm to the other side. That's when I can escape. Now, like I said, I can go fist in the neck here. I like this because I make another frame, and I can use it to shoot back in. But there's other things I can do as well. I can swim for an underhook. From here, guys, look what I can do. I can thread the needle, and it's exactly like the drill we did in the beginning of class. From here, I can come to the top. I can work to take him down. You just have to anticipate side switches, darts, chokes, things like that. But we're out of side control. So you can do either option. Both work really well. So once again, we're here, hand on the hip, arm along the temple right here. And I'm controlling to make sure he can't Get to side control. And remember guys, you have to relax a little bit. If I'm just pushing with all my might, he's not gonna try to submit me. He's just gonna try to hold, he's gonna hold back. He's gonna re meet my resistance with resistance of his own. And it's just, I'm gonna tire myself out. So from here, hands on the hip, other hands right here. I'm gonna wait for his motion. If he's doing nothing, he's not really holding, I can just go for it too. But if he's squeezing really tight, just squeeze with all your might, I'm not gonna do it from here. This isn't the time to go for it. So I'm just gonna wait, and then, like let's say he starts to go, boom. That's when I explode. Now from here, I can stay with the hand in the lapel, and I can shoot in. Shin in front, leg over the top, just like this. I mean, there's armbar situations, but he'll probably tuck his elbow, realistically. You're not gonna really get an armbar from there, unless he's really slipping. Now from here, guys, 
to create the space. I shrimp out, foot on the hip, and I recover to the guard. Okay. Now guys, this technique works, but if you're, if you go with a guy who's much bigger than you right after, during sparring today, he holds you in his side control and he squeezes you, and it doesn't work, and you say, oh, it doesn't work. Yes, the technique works, but you have to remember, he's in a dominant position. This position is a lot better for him than it is for you. It's gonna take some practice, it's gonna take some control, and it does work, but he has better options than me. That's why if you go on YouTube, you're gonna find a million videos on attacks from side control. You only find so many from bottom of side control. There's really not a whole lot of options. But one thing, guys, just so you know, I see a lot of guys that like to do this stuff where they, they put their foot in the lapel, they do this. Now, this can work. It does work sometimes, but man, I really feel the best option for these positions is just to create frames and use the basics. The basics, I feel, are the best way to escape these positions in my experience. You can make this work and you can really hurt his armpit and make it really unfun for him, but stick to the basics for now. So hand on the hip, other arm here protected. I'm not being lazy, just like this. And I can stay protected for the knee on belly. As he starts to go, boom, I make my frame. Now from here, guys, we have two options. I can either create space, but I can even use to pull myself back in to this position. Or, the other one, once we're here, I've created space, I circle for an underhook, grab the needle, and come up for the single leg. Now from here, I can knee tap, come on top. Two ways to finish, but the big thing is just more than the techniques, it's just the concepts, guys. I have to wait for him to give me space. And you're gonna find that space within transitions. When he's going for an underhook, he's going for an overhook, he's going for the arm. Those are moments of transition. And in those moments, there's space. And within that space, that's where we can make our frames. Make sense? One more time. So we're here, and remember this hand's on the hip. I can't extend it out yet. And it's not gonna be that helpful to extend it out if he's glued to me. This is just, this is still gonna put the shoulder pressure and it sucks, it's not really doing much. So I wait. I'm patient, and then from here I can, from here. And if you're, if you're a real savvy guy and you start to pressure me, I can always invert and recover. That's for more advanced guys, it's for purple belts up, maybe some blue belts as well. But just know the big thing is we're putting frames in front of them. Another concept, guys, to keep in mind, whenever the guy is passing your guard, he's passing three different things. He's passing your ankles, your knees, and your hips. And when he's in side control, He's passed all those points. So your objective is to start putting those points back in front of him. At its purest form, at its simplest, that's what you're trying to do. So when I'm here, and I go, boom, look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put these points back in front of him. I put my knees and my ankles, my hips, everything is back in front of him. That's an important detail for guard retention, too. When he starts to pass his points, I start throwing them back in front of him. Be safe. I'm gonna cover, just like so. All right, guys. On three. One, two, three.